Hey, RCA Church family and others joining in. This is a special day. Of course, you know it is election day. And listen, I have got the scoop before all the other news networks know. Listen, you heard it here first. I have the winner of the election. Are you ready? Gather your friends and family around. Here it is. God wins. Yes, God. Some of you are like, I don't even know he's on the ballot. Yeah, God wins. God is in control. I've got proof of that right here in Daniel chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. Listen to what it says. Daniel is talking to the king and he says, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. Listen to what he does. He removes kings and raises up kings. So, so here's what you need to know. Take comfort, church. Take comfort, Christian. Regardless of who wins or who loses today, God is the one who's done it. He removes kings and he raises them up. Isn't it comforting to know that God is in control that the election hasn't messed up his plan. In fact, the election has played into his plan. God is sovereign. God is in control. Listen, I, I don't know if you realize this or not, but God doesn't need to win an election to reign and to rule. God doesn't even need your vote to be in charge. Isn't that a good thing? I don't know about you, church, but I just think that we can have joy today, not because our candidate wins or loses, but because regardless, we serve a God who's able to use that candidate or that, that future president for his will and for his glory. That's the God I serve. But you know what? Just because he's in charge doesn't mean he doesn't want our involvement. I pray that you've gone and voted your conscience today, or maybe even you voted early. We need to do that. I spoke about that Sunday. Christians need to be involved. We need to go and vote our conscience. But also, God needs our involvement in prayer. Just a few days ago, at the end of last week, our general superintendent of the Assemblies of God, Doug Clay, sent out an email to all the pastors and churches. And I just want to read a short excerpt from that for you. He says this. He says, next week, of course, we know that's today, voters will select a president of the United States of America for the 59th time. This is our privilege and responsibility as citizens. We may or may not know the outcome by Tuesday evening. We can assume that regardless of who wins, there will be angst, unrest, contesting, and demonstrations. When our president takes office, he and this country need a healthy church. A divided nation is discouraging, but a divided church is devastating. That is so true, church. So, so he's calling on us as believers, as Christians, to pray for five areas. And that's what I'm calling on you. Will you join me today? If you, and I know that you've probably already been praying for the election and praying for a nation, but come on, it's, it's not over yet. Let's, let's pray for these five things. He says, peace, safety, unity, justice, and spiritual renewal. We need, to, we need to be praying, church, regardless of who wins or loses, regardless of what November 4th and beyond hold. If the church will rise up in these last days and we'll pray for peace, for safety, for unity, for justice, and spiritual renewal, and we'll commit ourselves to those things, then listen, the best is yet to come. God's not finished with this nation yet, regardless of the outcome. We serve a God who raises kings up and he sets them down when he's done with them. Take courage and, and, and strength from that today, church. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you soon.